it almost feels like um, a little wrong to talk about good news this week, um, just because the the news um, we uh, need the, it. The, news, the news from Gaza has been so um, awful. Um, but um, but yeah, we did do this thing. Um, the um, the build public renewables. Um, is a new law requiring that um, the state of New York um, use public money to build renewable energy. Um, so um, it's um, and it's it's different from a lot of climate legislation, um, which um, you know even um, really big um, climate legislation at the federal level, um, like the IRA, um, in Inflation Reduction Act, um, or the Bipartisan Infrastructure Act, anything like that, um, tends to um, emphasize um, in incentivizing private companies to do things, like through tax breaks, through subsidies. Um, it, um, it, it tends um, that at most climate legislation in the US is like, kind of like a big peace offering to capitalists totally. like pretty please um don't burn up the planet anymore let us give you some goodies yeah. <laughs> you know, like that's yeah. Yeah, that's the general model and you know as somebody who does not want the planet to be burned um, for myself or my children or grandchildren like i i, I get uh, that's good i'm glad that right. we are you're like dangle here. the carrots sure yeah 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 dangle them the carrots give them the candy um but um this um the build public renewables was a paradigm shift from that because um it um it mandates that the renewables be built um, in the public interest um, and reg and controlled by a public body, so it's essentially um, it's essentially like a public option, like yeah. when, like around healthcare when we um, when we used to talk about healthcare. <laughs> I love how you have to explain that because we're so distanced from what it could mean that something was like actually government, like <laughs> run by the government, funded by the government. We're like, wait a minute, so like um, Tesla is not building this? Like who is on a contract with a no 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 no? It's literally yeah, they're gonna own the people will own it. Yeah, yeah, um, but but at the same time, it's not like. Um, I mean, it's it's not like a full socialist takeover of the whole energy industry. So that's why I'm kind of clarifying it's like a public option. It's like how we used to talk about um, like a how uh, like a compromise between people who wanted totally um, who wanted single payer health care and um, and people who wanted <laughs> the same old crap right. that we have um, like the public option was kind of like a middle ground. Um, so this is the, this is this, this is that. For, for energy essentially, um, and um, and it's um, it, it's a big deal. Um, um, I mean, and and um, and five years ago, it would have been really um, unthinkable. What um, is does it mandate a certain amount of money or a certain amount of like solar or wind? Like, is it is it that specific or is it um, you know is it more vague in in its parameters? Um, it mandates that uh, it mandates that we um, build the renewable energy um, that so the private sector is going to be presumably making uh, making some renewable energy too um, but they were um, they were lagging way behind um, our state mandated goals um, so we had so in 2019 um, climate activists passed um, a, a um a bill um, setting targets. That's right. the other um, preferred, um, you know, uh, you know, um, rich country mode of doing climate legislation mm -hmm. is um, making a big deal of setting targets. Um, yeah, vision <laughs> vision boarding for fossil yeah, fuel rather than which, which gets a lot of headlines. But um, but it would be better if we would focus on meeting targets, doing the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always wonder who's supposed to implement that. Yeah. I think I asked the head of like the UN, like climate. <laughs> conference i was like what happens when people you know countries don't meet their renewable like benchmarks do you unleash the monster underneath the fukushima daiichi plant like is that what like right like you know like because there's yeah. nothing like what do you do yeah. well we're gonna we're gonna start a ground invasion like you yeah. know like here we go um, i mean we don't even put them in stocks and 
set them up in the town square and throw things at them. Like we I know, at least that. we could do that. Just tar and feather them. Yeah. Um. um but no, um, there's no. Um, so so we passed um, in 2019. We passed a bill that set a, that set targets, um, and the build public renewables will actually um, help us to meet the targets when the uh, private sector inevitably fails to meet them right. as we are um, unfortunately pretty confident that it will. And you talk about this campaign and how um, my the, my favorite part about the campaign is actually how um, offensive it was and how yeah, yeah, uh, exactly. how like not nice it was. And yeah. so tell me about how the DSA moved from maybe working with legislators to primarying their legislators. Yeah, um, absolutely. So, um, so you know, um, DSA is pretty new to um, having elected official to you know having elected officials um, that um, and 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 in some ways creating some new models for how organizations could work with elect elected officials. Like the the sort of traditional model was um, uh, you know and. So actually, I'm active in my union's um, uh, elections, and um, and so I've seen I've seen this um, uh, up close. Like you, you have um you invite them in, they convince you to endorse them, you endorse them, then you beg them to do the things that you want, and um, they occasionally will do those things if it's in their interest, or if you protest really hard, or you know sometimes they will not, and sometimes you'll protest really hard and think it's in their interest, and they will still not do the things. Um, you know, and that's that's sort of the usual model of how organizations relate to um, to elected officials. And and DSA over the last few years has um, been um, forging a different model where um, people, the people who run for office, come out of the organization um, and um, and are running for office because they want to advance those specific um, socialist goals. And then there's a very um, then there's sort of a very intimate back and forth between um, the members and the elected officials. And there's like a whole, um, you know, there are committees that are, you know, sort of specifically to work with them on legislation. Um, and so, so this is the Build Public Renewals, Re Renewables is one of the bigger um, outcomes mm -hmm. of that effort. Um, and, um, and it creates a little. It, it's it's a it's a diff, it's a difficult dance for the um, elected officials themselves because it really requires them to break with um, Albany etiquette, to break with um, the business as usual of how you are a politician, um, right. because because which is really great <laughs> um, because um, really great for the public um, because the um, the tr the traditional model of how you are a politician is very um, collegial and backslappy with each other. Um, you know, very, um, you know, you do things behind closed doors, you don't insult your colleagues, um, you, um, you, um, you know, you you sponsor things very transactionally for other, um, other you know, you sign my bill, I'll sign yours. Yeah. Um, you know, and, um, and, and, and the first year or so, you know that was working um, okay for for advancing some of DSA's goals, um, but um, they um, they got a huge um, rent relief rent the renters' rights package through um, in 2019. Um, a lot of progressive um, other progressive legislators um, worked um, with DSA housing groups um, worked on that really hard, um, but. Um, but with build, build public renewables, um, they found um, it was um, it was just not working. Yeah. Um, for um, for one thing, um, legislators were um, had by this time gotten used to some of DSA's tactics. Um, so so one of DSA's tactics was to um, which <laughs> sounds like a really banal tactic was to get people to call their legislators but people in Albany were so unaccustomed to hearing from their That's constituents so funny. that the first couple of years it was wild like people were like <laughs> oh god like whoa yeah you know, if people really care about this like I, I better do something and then after a while they kind of caught they kind of were like okay they were like oh send a voicemail I'm a genius <laughs> Exactly. Um, exactly. Right. So, um, so, so, the, so, so those, so, so those kinds of tactics did, were were no longer working, um, and um, 
and they um and they also realized that people who would um would say they sponsored the leg they would agree to co-sponsor the legislation um and not in good faith um so um, an example of that was a politician named kevin parker um a, a state senator from brooklyn and he who brought was the legislation right who, who yes. was sponsoring it he agreed to sponsor the legislation and um and as one of the um, what, as as one of the DSA activists said to me, um, we were even though we were socialists, we were not cynical enough um, um, about these people. <laughs> um, so he he got he so he, uh, because Parker agreed to sponsor the legislation and then never introduced it, never tried to get anyone else to co-sponsor it. When DSA would go to Kevin Parker's colleagues and say, "Can you sign on? Can you co-sponsor this?" Um, and they would say, well, we never um, sponsor bills unless the main sponsor has asked us to. And then they realized um, they'd been they'd been had. Yeah. And they looked <laughs> they at, must arrive with a feather pen at the Yes, the exactly. Moon, the moon. And so then and, and they looked at then they looked at his campaign donations and saw enormous donations from um, the fossil fuel industry and from utility companies. Um, and then they noticed that um Everyone else who would conceivably be responsible for pushing um, um, any kind of energy legislation was also getting these big donations from the fossil fuel industry. That's so the, my biggest question. Like, how the hell did they break through that? I mean, you're going to yeah. get to that. But I mean, looking at California, the, like we're fucked. Like our legislature is just a wash in fossil fuel money. I mean, they're yeah. swimming in it. So yeah. anyway, the, it's one the of the saga biggest continues. Yeah, it's one of the biggest problems. So, um, so the first not nice thing they did was put Kevin Parker and all of these other politicians' um, heads on signs shaped like a Venmo sign with all the um, fossil fuel um, demonstration with all the fossil fuel donation amounts. Oh, that's mean. On these signs, that's so mean. Um, yes, it was so mean, and the politicians were very upset um, and did not like this at all, and did not think it was very um, collegial. Um, and um, and they um, and then they were like, okay, you know, we but they were like, okay, we got to do more than just um, humiliate them. Um, and um, and they um, and and you know, at some point they had a conversation with um, a sympathetic you know senator who was not from DSA, and they asked him, okay, so should we um, should we try to be nicer or should we try to be more negative? And he said being going negative is always better um and and they were like okay um and um and so um so so they um decided to uh primary kevin parker the bill's lead sponsor love it um, which is um just completely at odds with how things are done um it's not what the sierra club would have done um as someone i interviewed said um and uh um and they um, didn't win. Um, David David Alexis was the candidate, um, but um, they eventually got Kevin Parker's um, passionate and fervent support of the bill um, because the um, the campaign against him um, was a good one and had a lot of heart um, and was not just a well intentioned symbolic campaign, but one with a lot of momentum. Right. Um, in the community, and um, and um, and so, so that was um, that was one of the many things they they did. But definitely they, not not playing nice was important, and um, and is pretty um, rare for environmental um, advocates. Like environmental yeah. advocates tend to be very um, um, very very nice and collegial within the system. Very. Um, you know, let, so, like <laughs> they'll they'll plant a tree for every time uh, you don't bring the bill to the floor. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, and, and but I also think that this strategy specifically is so inside outside because you have yeah. DSA backed candidates exactly. in this in the legislature in Albany, um, so that's huge. And then you've got sort of the ground game pressure of yeah, you, the street signs, the fun exactly. stuff, the like the you know the rabble rousers, you know, and you've got the electoral strategy. So you're in exactly. literally all sides of this um yeah. and i also think that as someone who says 
I think I wonder how this translates to the federal level, because there's part of me that feels like it can work in places like Albany, Sacramento, like these like mm -hmm. state capitals where like, you know, uh, nameless legislators are like, gee, I don't want my name on that side, you know, but but on a federal level, I feel like we don't have to talk about that, but I'm like, but they're used to being humiliated. It's right, exactly. Right it's just, the, the echelon of power is so much higher. The barrier, mm -hmm. the, the, you know, the, their actual fear of being ousted in a primary is a lot higher. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know, Raph, did you want to weigh in here on, on this campaign or like, you know, maybe some of the ways that, uh, I mean, I think it's interesting the ways that New York has, I mean, let's be real, y'all, set us back nationally when it comes to oh, yeah. um, representation in Congress. Oh, my God. Awful. Yeah. Th then it's nice to see that, like, sort of internally, the state isn't necessarily swinging right in the way that it is, you know, on the national Yeah, scale. yeah. But um, we do feel super guilty about what happened. <laughs> Good. Yeah, we're really sorry. And we should. You should be. <laughs> yeah, I'm really Fuck sorry. you. Yeah. yeah, I'm bullying my uh my my Greta. How dare you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Which, which all, by the way, like all those seats. I mean, with this whole speakership bullshit, it's like I think all those seats must should be trembling. They should be very very scared. I mean, there's in terms of some DSA pickups, mm -hmm. there's some there's some uh, districts out there that are ripe for the taking. Uh, mm -hmm. depending on where this current GOP takes Congress. But anyway, Raf, did you want to weigh in on yeah, this? I mean, I, I was the, the, the biggest thing to me in this campaign was sometimes we win big and in New York and uh, the governor kind of moderates whatever with a sneaky <laughs> way and divides us. And then like some other version of the bill passes mm -hmm. and it's right. not really great. Like, and somehow you all DSA and others avoided that. And and she tried. She actually tried to to divide everyone on it and and make a what do they call it the light version of it the or? the, B, the BPRA light yeah yeah, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. So how did how did how did you hold on to all of the the principles I think almost mm -hmm. all of them yeah yeah that was a really interesting thing um, so um so the, yeah Kathy Ho Governor Kathy Hochul um who just like, who barely won her election, um, as you've been right. al um, alluding to, she was um, almost defeated by an absolute maniac, um, Lee Zeldin, um, very conservative um, Trumper. Um, and um, and her response to that was, um, was to um, um, to veer to the right, of course, um, rather than to rather than to veer to the left, um, which is you know, even though like we know at the last minute who is really knocking doors um, for a Democratic candidate, it's not the most right wing Democrats that are busting their butts to do that. Right. Um, so but she said so, but that was not she did not draw that lesson from her um, her near her 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 very close victory. Um, and um, and she introduced the the BPR a light, which was very divisive. It stripped the bill of its labor provisions, which were incredibly important. Um, around it, union union work, or yeah, around yeah. Um, so so it it mandates it it, it mandates labor standards um, and um, you know and um, unionized jobs um, to be created by um, by the public renewables, um, and um, she also stripped it from um, from it. Um, some specific environmental justice provisions, um, in, including the closing of key um, um, polluting peaker plants in black and brown neighborhoods. Which is um, massive, that it wasn't just a bill a bill to build, it was a yes. bill to shut down stuff that was poisoning communities. Exactly. Anyway, yeah. Exactly. So it was, um, so it was a really good bill and the politics of it were really good because it was bringing in all these people who like, you know, it was like just you know, bringing in um, the people in poor communities, bringing in the labor unions, even my labor union, my labor union endorsed it. Like it was just like a lot, it was a really good um, coalition. Um, and, um, and the, um, and what Kathy Hochul's bill did was it, um, it, it was the sort of compromise that really divides and fractures coalitions mm -hmm. like you know where um and 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 i think that she thought 
um, that the eco-socialists would just be like, oh, great, we won, you know, and throw all their allies under the bus. Um, but they didn't do that because the, the, those provisions were so key to the values of the bill and to the politics um, of it and to the future coalition of continue you know you want to continue to build on what the, on what this coalition did and you don't do that um, by um, by throwing your allies under under the bus in that way um, and so um, so so, the, so they, they held out they held out mm, they um and um and in the end um, they got just about everything they wanted incredible yeah. I mean she didn't try hard enough, clearly, to divide them. Um, but it no, was, she's, but... She, she, she's she's honestly not that smart, which is great. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. but, I mean, she was smart enough to have this um, really bad, um, uh, this really terrible um, idea that does work in some situations. You right. know, it's common for people in power to, to divide the activists from each other um, and or right. to try, but um, but in this case, it didn't work. Last question for you, which is about the Inflation Reduction Act. And do you think that yeah. this, I mean, because it incentivizes so many private corporations, it, but is there something hidden that we've missed? Is there a yeah. way where we can use the New York model and try to is expand that and say, yeah, we need, you know, if we're going to meet these emission targets, California or whatever state you live in, you, you know, you have emission targets. I'm sure if it's a blue state, especially, can yeah. we replicate what New York did? Absolutely. So um, it's a horrible month. It feels horrible to say anything nice about Biden and his policies. Yes, it um, does. I'm going to so, have to take a shower if you say anything nice yes. about him. Um, so, 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 so I just want to say that. Um, that um, um, the, um, however, um, so the Inflation Reduction Act, um, while um, earlier we criticized the the sort of guiding philosophy behind it, um, what's um, there is a lot of hidden stuff in it that can be used um, for good, um, and um, and one of the one of those is um, that um, it provides public money for mm -hmm. any public entity that wants to create renewable energy. So once the IRA passed, um, the, um, the coalition behind the BPRA was able to say, look, we are leaving money on the table. Like we're mm -hmm. losing money by not um, passing this bill. And that's a very potent argument for lawmakers um, across the, the political spectrum. It is. Um, Although Republicans have still not made good on, they they still don't want the no. Obamacare money. It's like no, no, they it's don't. There, they, they, it's no, still they, there. No, they're just they're afraid their penises will fall off if they yeah exactly they in power or whatever. Um, but the um, but the um, the so the um, there are some differences in New York's situation because the um, the public power authority was created by Franklin Roosevelt when he was governor and sort of is is kind of a precursor to a New Deal um, um, body, sort of a precursor to the Tennessee Valley Authority and um, and those kinds of public offices that um, that 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 funded energy, but um, that you don't need that in order. To benefit from um, from the IRA's um, funding for public energy, any public entity will do. A school board could create um, get money for creating renewable energies if they want to put like solar panels on the roofs of their schools. I mean, a um, that's huge. A library could do could put a windmill of you know like any like any. Yes, trigger energy. Trump more windmills. I want to see. A Endless windmills. Exactly. I want the prison that he won't be housed in, but if he is, I hope it is 100% powered by windmills. Totally. Um, <laughs> but yeah. that's really promising. I mean, that's really yeah. important stuff to to know. And and also, again, with I think the best part of your piece and about this whole story is the that aggressive tactics in the campaign, the campaign tactics, and the fact that you know even people on the inside were like, yeah shake these motherfuckers up like shake albany yes. up like why don't yes. you get them out of their comfort zone they're not used to it and and they're gonna buckle um exactly 
exactly. So now that other pe people in other um, places um, are um, using um, the Inflation Reduction Act um, to make the same argument, you know, that, That's um, right. that they, they should build public renewables. What's going on, Frantifa? If you haven't already, subscribe to this channel right now. Hit that button. And also, you can become a patron and support the show every single week. Get access to bonus episodes and exclusive merchandise. Patreon.com slash Bituation Room. Do it.